This may end up feeling a little bit like algebra class and not geometry to begin with, but we are going to talk about input-output, and we are going to start with a little bit of algebraic relationships to get to the geometry. First, I want you to notice the idea of what's happening here is they've given us a function, and they've given us a value for x. This is certainly an input relationship because we're going to take this and drop it into here. So if we were trying to find the function at negative 4, it would be 2 times negative 4 squared plus a negative 4. This is 2 times 16 minus 4, and we get a final answer of 28 when we do that. So this value that I'm finishing with is the output value, and the input value was right here at negative 4. Just one more quick example. Uh, here is the function again. Here is x. If we were to do this problem, we would find the function when x is 11, negative 5 times 11 plus 1, and we get a negative 54 as the value. Again, repeating that this is the output of the relationship, and this was our input in that relationship. We also learned that you can work backwards, so let's look at those. What you should notice here is that we are not being given x now. We're given the value of the function is at 13. So this actually, in this case, is not an input question. This is an output question. They're giving you what f of x is. Notice how this will set up a little bit differently. I'm going to write 13 equals x cubed minus 14, move the 14 over, and I get x cubed equals 27. This becomes x equals 3 as an answer. Notice, again, what happened here is what this is was I was given the output or the answer, and I was to find x, the input. This is working backwards through that same environment. Similarly, let's look. Here's our function. Here's the answer to that function. So if we were to do this problem, we would say negative 29 equals 8x minus 5. We move the 5 over to the other side to get negative uh, 24 equals 8x, and x equals negative 3. Uh, notice again that I am using the output, and what I solved for was the input. So they work both ways to that direction. You'll see in a minute the way this works in geometry. Also in algebra, sometimes we introduce something called function machines as a way to just give you an idea about input and output. So in the center here is what the machine actually will do. So let's pick an input. Let's say let's pick 10 as the input. Well, if we put in 10 and we add 5, the output would be 15. Very simple mathematics, right? If we were to pick um, negative 3 as our value, a 2 would come out. Also quite simple mathematics. Go the other way. What happens if we were to pick a 6 that was the output? Going the other way, what was inputted would have been the 1. And we basically do the reverse process to solve for the input. This is just called a function machine. And all you're doing is putting in inputs. And, uh, and they're generating the output or vice versa through the process. Now let's take a look at how this all applies to geometry. In geometry, we have an input and an output machine as well. But it's called a coordinate rule. And the way it works is that it basically is going to tell you when you take a point, x and y, exactly what you should do to that point. This says add 3 to the x value. And this says subtract 6 from the y value. That is the input-output rule called a coordinate rule. Also, two very, very important words is instead of input, we're going to call that one the pre-image. And then when we make the new one, we're calling it the image. Those are critical words to understand. Let's try using these coordinate rules to solve for some new points. All right, let's bring this first one up. So this coordinate rule says we're going to subtract 4 from x, and we're going to multiply y by negative 3. So if we were starting with uh, negative 1, negative 2, 
Then the new, that's our B, our B prime, which means the image of B, would be that we would subtract 4, so that would be negative 5, and we would multiply this by negative 3, which would give us 6. So this is known as the image of uh, B, B prime. And all we've done is applied the coordinate rule to obtain that. Let's look at one more of this type. But this was an input and our output, or in other words, pre-image to image. Let's look at one more. This is another one that's going to be input to output. The reason I know that is that uh, this is A, and they want us to find the image of A. So let's try it again. Uh, A is at 3 and 2. Using our new rule, it says multiply x by 3. That would be 9 minus 1 is 8, so we would get an 8. And multiply 5 times 2 to get 10. This is the image. So we went from pre-image all the way to the image. Let's try the reverse process, just like we did with the algebra questions. I do notice something different right away. It does say determine the pre-image of C prime. So think about it this way, is that we have already done the, the value um, x, y has already uh, appeared here at the image. So we already have the 13 and the negative 7, and we're trying to go backwards. Now, my technique for this is to say, well, what got us there was 5x plus 3 and 7y. So you can kind of say to yourself, well, wait a minute. Um, 13 was created by this thing. So just solve that. Say, well, when, what did we do with 5x plus 3 to get 13? And we get a nice value for x. Look at that. And that's how easy it is to find our x, working it backwards. In a similar way, if I see that this is negative 7 and this is 7y, then I could just say 7y became negative 7. y equals negative 1. I have found my two values that were the original points, the pre-image. So in this case, we went from output and we, we obtained the input. Let's do one more with that style of questioning. Once again, we notice that the question has asked a different thing. They want the pre-image of C prime. My technique, as I showed you earlier, is that I work it backwards by just saying, somehow we used this coordinate rule to obtain the answers of a 1 here and a 6 here. So I create two simple little equations. I say, well, when did x plus 7 equal 1? And I get my answer of 6. There's my x value already. Now the other one is a little trickier. 2 thirds of y equals 6. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. And I get 2y equals 18. And then y equals 9. There I have it. I have created i um, been able to calculate the values for the x as well as for the y going from an output, again going from the output to obtain the input. Hope this helps.